Hello everyone, I'm Jo Good and this is a very special edition of the Sheer Lux Show. It's for our gold viewers and we're going to have a look at a week in outfits with a top stylist and also a very special edition on health um, and also an inspirational interview that I absolutely loved. It made my day. But first of all, let me introduce today's guests. We have top makeup artist Ruby Hammer. Hello, Ruby. Hello, Jo. And beauty and wellness expert Susanna Taylor. Hello, Susanna. Hello. Hi. Um, I just wish we'd had the cameras going when we all sat here, actually, because we were bringing <laughs> hairbrushes out of our handbags and rushing away. And it's one of the things I want to talk about is our locks and our hair and how important it is to us. So I'm going to kick off with you, Ruby, first all of right. all, because you were talking about your childhood and growing up where people were spraying lemon juice into their hair to give it highlights. Those days have ended. We're a bit more um, technically helped, I suppose, aren't we now? We're very, very clued up. There's lots of brands out there for every aspect of what you need, you know, from your young teens, whether sun, highlight, colour, cut, all of that, perms. I remember, oh my God, perms in the 70s. Um, but at this age that I am, I'm now 60. I'm going to be 61 in December. It's not just, can you believe I know, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> it's not, for me, it's much my face, it's not my wrinkles. I'm not bothered about all those. I am worried about my hair and my hair loss. So I've probably got female pattern balding. I'm losing it from here. So people think it's nothing to be scared about and I'm very confident about everything, body changing, aging. But that is your crowning glory. That's the frame. And, and Ruby, do you think this is post-menopause? Forgive me, I don't know if you're in the menopause. No, I'm at the tail end of menopause. Tail end. So do you, is that when it started? I don't think it's... It started when I was 50, when my mum was diagnosed with cancer. And I literally, the shock of that, they said she's got two weeks to live. My hair went grey overnight so. and I never had a period. The post-effect of um, menopause does do that. Yeah. You, I was in a grieving process, but I've also got that female pattern. Well, my mum had it, my really? late mum had very thin hair and it literally goes around there. So all, if you looked underneath my hair, it's all full and lovely and dense. If you look around here, if I was a bald man, that's what it would be. And may I just ask briefly, do you use any products for it. Yes, it has to be conditioned now, but I have to do things, you know, with Philip Kingsley, with all these other brands that are out there, Ranavat, whether it's Ayurvedic way, whether it's scientific way, to stop this shedding and make the best of what I've got. Well, um, Susanna, I think you'll agree, your hair looks fantastic. It's, um, you see, it it's only amazing. when you chat like this, you realise what people live with and what their fear is. Everybody has something. Absolutely. I don't think I've ever interviewed anyone who said I love my hair <laughs> you know, everyone goes oh god I have you know good hair bad I hair. did love my hair I don't want to lose it no That's I can all. understand that and <laughs> I, I want to talk about the Philip Kingsley thing because um, uh, I spoke to their top trichologist and he said and this is something to remember eat carbs stop denying yourself carbs oh interesting you might have something to say on that Susanna but look at your hair it is like hair. a lion's mane <laughs> It, it is a bit of a lion's mane, but actually it's not actually in it. I don't think anyone's actually seen it in its natural state. Because in its natural state, it's, it's like that. I always say, now this shows my age, that it's like Nicole Kidman's and Days of Thunder, which is basically, <laughs> yes, it doesn't do a great curl. It's just a pile of frizz. <laughs> so, um, so I've kind of smoothed it, as it were. I would say straighten it, but I don't like it super straight because then it, then it knocks nice all the life out of it. Um, so I have smoothed it since I was about 18. Actually. And would you, I mean, I did the, I had very long blonde hair. And when I got to 60, I thought it's time I've got to cut it off. And it was like Goliath. You know, I just honestly thought this is all, I'm just a head of hair. You've got beautiful hair. Would you ever chop it? Well, I have had it short before. And actually, I always return to having it longer. So any time now that I say to my husband, I'm thinking of going shorter, it's like, you've done that before. <laughs> about five times in your life, don't, don't do what? it because you always, it? Go, always what, go back. What is it about men and long hair, do you think? I don't know. I think it maybe represents youth, carefree. But I love having long hair. Personally, I love the fact that we don't have to have age-appropriate hair now. Which is amazing. brilliant. Genius. Yeah. You look amazing with your short hair. It's so I've expensive. got mid-length and you've got 
It was longer. Past. I've just yeah. No, I've, yeah. I've seen Susanna. But Ruby, this cost a fortune. It cost an absolute fortune. That's why I'm going to have to give out my car. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. ladies, we will be back. And this is like this because I'm lazy. <laughs> We will be back shortly, but first, let's take a look at what stylist Rebecca Clouston wears in a typical week. From a date night to a girl's lunch, she has all the inspiration you need to what to wear at this time of year. Hi, my name is Rebecca Clouston. I'm a personal stylist. I'm going to take you through what I would wear during the course of the week. So Monday, I would typically work from home, I would be running errands, catching up after the weekend. I would want things to be really simple. So I throw on this jumpsuit, which I think is so comfortable. I wear trainers and I love these red trainers because they just spark joy in my life. It just feels relaxed and sort of slouchy, the closest to a onesie that you can get after a weekend. On to Tuesday. So Tuesday, I shall be working part of the day and then having lunch with my girlfriends. I love leather trousers. I find them as comfortable as jeans, very easy to just throw on. I think they're more flattering very often than jeans are. I'm putting a little uh, camel cashmere v-neck sweater with these. My boots are picking up the colours of my jumper and also the trousers and my belt. Then, assuming it's a slightly blustery day, I would put this lovely frame jacket, which is very light, and I call this winter white. I generally always turn back cuffs on my jackets because I think it's really important to show your wrists. That your wrists are the slimmest part of your body on any woman, and it's quite nice to just have a little bit of uh, wrist candy. I love layering rings, um, bracelets, necklaces. It feels relaxed and uh, very easy. Now on to Wednesday. So on Wednesday I've got a full day of work. I should be meeting clients and I love wearing a wide leg pant because it feels almost as though you've got a tracksuit bottom on. They're super comfortable. You can wear them with high boots but you can also wear them with trainers. I'm wearing a sparkly knit on top because I love a bit of sparkle. Always an excuse. And I would put a blazer over this to just make it a little bit more formal. Again, I turn up the cuffs on the blazer just to feel a bit more relaxed. So it's a very easy uh, work to evening look. And now on to Thursday. So this is Thursday's outfit. Um, I would meet a client for the first time wearing a dress like this. It's a very soft, buttery leather. Uh, and I love this colour khaki. It feels like a real neutral for me. When I choose a boot to wear with a midi dress or skirt, it's really important that it fits really well around your ankle so that you are encouraging the slimmest, again, the slimmest part of your leg is on show and it just makes it a lot more streamlined then. With a dress, sometimes you don't want to chop it up with a jumper. I would choose a coat and I really enjoy mixing colours together. It's so easy to opt for a black coat. So I always say to clients, invest in coats and uh, boots that you really love and that make a little bit of a statement because that's what people are going to see. On to Friday. So Friday is very much about date night and I've opted tonight for a cohort that's got quite a lot of glitter in as you can see. It's got a lovely v-neck, the skirt is full but long so I feel very covered up but still very elegant and ladylike. The other advantage with a cold is that you can wear something separately. So I could put a just a cashmere jumper with this um, skirt. I can wear the glitter with some jeans. It's quite sort of swishy as well, so I feel fabulous. Now for Saturday. So Saturday is very much a jeans day. I'm going to be taking my girls out for coffee this morning and uh, that might then lead into lunch. 
and I just feel as though I'm not working when I wear jeans because I tend to wear slightly dressier clothes to work. I've put a Breton jumper but it's got a little bit of glitter. This is a lovely jacket that's really neutral and goes with everything. I love these tones with blue denim with a, with a stone wash. I think it's just very easy on the eye and quite classic. And then I've got my funky boots which I just love and they're not too high but I feel a little bit elevated and this just feels relaxed, comfortable and just a really good start to the weekend. Now for Sunday. And finally Sunday. So on the weekends I tend to find that I really embrace colourful bold choices. So today I've got my patterned uh, cut off jeans in a, in a great print and a beautiful poplin white shirt which is just very easy to wear. Put these jeans on today with my red trainers because we're going to be in and out of the house. Just feel comfortable, they spark joy as I've said before. Add another pop of colour and uh, I'm good to go. So that wraps up the week. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed my outfits. Until next time. <laughs>Loved that, Rebecca. Thanks so much. Loved every single thing, especially those leather trousers. And the skin looked incredible. Wonderful skin. Now, speaking of skin, I'm going to ask Susanna and Ruby about their skincare <laughs> and beauty tips. I mean, we have the best here on the sofa. So um, I'm going to kick off this time with Susanna. Look at, I mean, getting ready to come and do this show, there was just a bit dusting of, of powder. That's it. So you're letting your skin shine through. Well, I, one thing I've always disliked my whole life, for me personally, is looking caked in makeup. I've always done that kind of, well, I've tried to do that uh, no makeup makeup look. And so I like products with quite fine textures that you can sort of layer uh, rather than caking it on. And I've never loved that whole um, sculpted sort of Instagram look anyway, it's just not me. And as far as skincare is concerned, like my mum, she had a pot of Astral and a pot of Nivea. That was it by the side of her bed. <laughs> yeah. I have a whole line of different serums. I mean, it takes me hours to get ready to go to bed. Is there any point, do you think, to that? There are very few products that really properly work, I think. Um, I think a lot of it is the sensorial aspect. It makes you feel better just using it. Um, but I, um, I have quite a simple beauty routine, to be honest with you, because I don't, uh, okay. I don't have time. Tell us the one product that you think is essential in good skincare. The one product I would say is a very good moisturiser. A lot of people think that it's ageing and you can't do anything about it, but I think hydration and moisture is key. Ruby, you get to be very close up on people's faces. Constantly, that's all Absolutely. I'm looking like this. And just as someone who, who puts makeup on people, what do you see is the most common fault for women of of our age. Not caking in in one big layer. It's always steps. You can always add more and people forget to blend. So it's that discerningly look at your face for 30 seconds. I've said this before again and again. It, you have to have a regime in place. Your makeup that's there, you need clean tools, you need the right products and you need to spend a little bit of time blending and applying it. A 50 pound Tom Ford palette is not gonna jump on your face by itself just because you've spent 50 pounds on that palette. And would you say that the makeup is as important as the skincare? My it? philosophy always has been skincare or cosmetics is underpinned by skincare. Yeah. You cannot have good makeup if you have not taken care of yeah. your skin. You can't paper over the cracks. Yeah. No. As they say. No, absolutely. We're, Susanna and I are dying to know what's in your makeup bag. <laughs> <laughs> Selfishly, I, I do use my little lip serum bombs and I've got six shades now and I've got the pink one on I now. I love that. So I, I like things that are hybrid, that they take care of your skin and give you a bit of color. So I love those. In the same vein, I love tools that are multifunctional, purposeful. This is Ruby's amazing tool, so, by the way. Hang on, you just, she hasn't promoted that. That no, is amazing. I, so is that that's a mascara with what on no, the it's end? Got, no, it's multiple brushes in one. Multiple wow. brushes in one. So I, this one has a spoolie, that one's a lip brush. So I've just, because I didn't need the third eyeliner bit, I've left that at home and just bought that in my bag. I love that. Can I just ask you, we were talking about clean utensils. 
Um, I always I'm so clean. bad. I never wash my beauty blender. I'm dreadful at washing. I'm it. paranoid about. Are that. you? Yeah. Yes. Do you do you wash them every night? I, after every single person professionally, yes, and my personal one gets done once a week. Do you, Susanna? I wouldn't say it's that often. Lie. I'll be honest with you. I wouldn't say it's that often, but I do wash them. I just wash them. People um, faff around with brush cleaners and things like that. I literally get some shampoo or something, if you, or some face wash. So if you think about it, you're yeah, washing yeah, your face yeah, with yeah. that anyway. Right, we're going to be back shortly. But first, I sat down earlier with Dr. Shazadi Harper of the Harper Clinic to answer questions sent in by our viewers on health issues that we may face in midlife. I am so excited to welcome... Dr. Harper from the Harper Clinic, which is a clinic right in the center of London, dealing with the wellness of women. How fantastic is that? And particularly today, looking at the menopause. In fact, I think, Dr. Harper, you've even written about the menopause, haven't you? Yeah, I've written about the perimenopause solution, which is that stage just leading up to menopause, yeah. Um, we are so lucky to have you here today because recently there has been this groundbreaking news, and for my generation, it really is groundbreaking, that every woman is entitled to an appointment with their GP to discuss the menopause. Can you explain this more to us? Yeah, so it's an all parties um, parliamentary group. You know, there have been discussions on it, and it finally, you know, what's been decided is that every woman at the age of 45 can have a menopause check. Um, or check in um, rather than waiting for things to happen. I think it's a, it's great that we're being proactive and we're taking women's health seriously. Personally, I feel it could be a little bit earlier, you know, but I think it's a start. You know, we've got the ball rolling. Actually, about 10% of women do naturally go through an earlier menopause between the ages of 40 and 45, and 1% of women will do so under the age of 40. And then some women are just thrown into menopause through surgery, through medical treatments. Um, so I think it's great we're starting that ball rolling. Um, I think, you know, we've talked about this before about women's sort of health. Um, you know, it just needs to come a little bit more um, priority, become a bit more priority. Absolutely. Uh, there are so many questions I want to ask you, but we've got um, viewers' questions here as Brilliant. well. And one of them being HRT. I mean, I'm well away from my menopause 10 years ago. HRT was such a controversial subject. It's not so much so now. There are various types of HRT. Can you run that through it? Yeah, so HRT basically stands for hormone replacement treatment. Um, and why we prescribe it is because women's ovaries stop producing or reduce pr producing oestrogen, progesterone, and there's testosterone as well. Um, and there are many different types which are available on the NHS. You know, you have patches, you have gels, you have tablets, and you have what we call body identicals, um, which are made from yam. Um, and so you can get oestrogel, which is made from yam, which is um, plant-based. Also, the natural micronized progesterone, again, that's produced from yam. And testosterone can be produced from yam as well. So, so there are many different versions. There's no one-size-fits-all. And if one version doesn't work, don't give up. You can go for a different version. I think um, one of our questions is about patches, actually. What, what patch would you recommend? You talk about yam. Is that more holistic? Is that more... Less risk, is there risk? The patches um, also contain 17 beta estradiol, which is a dominant estrogen in our body. 90% of our estrogen in our body is made from 17 beta estradiol. That's in the patches, that's also in the gel pumps. And so, you know, it's not a question of one is better than the other, but some women may prefer a more plant-based one. Um, so, so much is connected to the change in hormones. And one of the questions here is, why is my skin aging so much post-menopause or perimenopause? Why does that happen? Because going back to estrogen, which is our sort of hero hormone, not only does it regulate our menstrual cycle, but we have estrogen receptors in our skin, in our joints, and estrogen helps a buildup of collagen. And collagen is that scaffolding to our face. So as estrogen levels decline, that collagen declines, and that's why we start to get that sort of downward trend in our face. Also, estrogen helps to plump up the skin, so we lose that volume in our skin. Um, and when our hormones start to change in perimenopause, the, the decline is more gradual. It's about 2% loss of collagen per year. But then once we go post-menopause, when your periods are finally ended, it's, it's a dramatic drop. It's 30% within five years. I mean, let's talk about hair, hair loss, because that's one of the most frustrating things. We think we've got all these products for a full of a head of hair. Are they going to do anything if you've got a hormone challenge? Um, yes and no. I mean, I think, you know, women um, experience hair thinning, you know, widening of parting, 
breakage. You know, they feel it's not growing that um, as long as it was. It, you, they lose that volume. So, you know, yes, hormones can help. Rebalancing your hormones is the important part. Sometimes if women have too many androgens, which are male hormones, that causes the hair thinning. There are lots of shampoos actually out there now which do focus on um, women of midlife and beyond. I mean, Vichy is quite a good brand. There's also Viviscal. Um, I think Pantene's also created one for midlife women. So, yes, they do, you know, um, and I have tried um, the Vichy and the Viviscal ones myself. And, uh, and I think they, they help to add a little bit of volume and a bit of thickness um, and nourishment. Mm -hmm. um, some of these questions, and I thank everyone for sending them in because they are quite personal, and this is to yeah. do with libido. So why, uh, since I've started the menopause, has my sexual drive almost completely disappeared? Yeah, really good question. But, you know, just to put into context, you know, one in three of us do lose our libido at some point in our life, you know, maybe because of grief, maybe a relationship breakdown, work or something. But yes, more women do um, around this time. 60% 60 60 of women will say that they've lost libido. Our hormones have declined, and because of that, the physical nature, you know, we get vaginal dryness, um, and so sex can be very uncomfortable because there's less lubrication. Um, also, you know, sort of psychologically, mentally, um, women sort of lose their confidence, their self-esteem. Maybe your body's changed, that there's been, been a bit of weight gain, you feel that your skin's aged. So, you know, you lose that sort of feeling of sexiness. And also, hmm. with menopause, Often many symptoms, some of the symptoms are things like insomnia, you know, anxiety. Um, and so if you're not sleeping well, I mean, who's up for it when you're tired? <laughs> Half the time, who's up for it anyway? I mean, I actually fabricated that question. That question is from me because <laughs> I have, I feel like I have no hormones. You know, I just feel like you use the word sexiness and some people sail through it and become even more sexy. Yeah. How, is that just nature or is that because they are helping themselves genuinely? I think there's, I, I think there is a bit of both. I think they are helping themselves. And when it comes to vaginal dryness, I often say, you look, even if you are somebody who doesn't want to take HRT, you want to go through, your, through it in, in your own way, vaginal estrogen, just some hormones in your, in, for vaginal dryness, is really important. You know, it just works locally, it helps to plump, helps to lubricate, it helps to reduce um, you know, things like cystitis and thrush because it brings back the sort of healthy environment. So, And there's not really any leakage into the rest of your body. So even women who've had breast cancer treatment can have vaginal oestrogen. So I'm a great advocate of it. I think, you know, maybe at 40, it should be given in a goodie bag to every woman <gasps> moving yes. forward. Um, and, yes. and, and, you know, and I think it, when you feel that everything's right down there, if you, mm. if you want to have sex, then at least mm. you know it's going to be comfortable. Mm. And just finally, um, on the oestrogen, is it topical? So is it a cream or do you take it? And so you can have it oil. as a cream or as a pessary. So you, you, you know, just like a, you know, when you treat your thrush you know, with a pessary, you insert it into the vagina. So you can insert it into the vagina, apply some cream. There's even something called an e-string, which is like a little bit like a cap, you know, the old fashioned diaphragm, uh -huh, but without yeah. the middle part you insert that into your vagina and that lasts for three months, giving out a little bit of oestrogen to keep everything healthy. I haven't heard anyone mention the cat for years. Mine used to fly <laughs> around, literally fly around the bathroom, yeah. you know, flying everywhere. Um, there is a question here about joint ache with yeah. HRT. So does that go hand in hand that if you take HRT, you're possibly going to suffer from aching joints? No, I mean, when you are going through uh, perimenopause and menopause, joint aches and pains can be one of the symptoms. So, you know, 60% of women actually get joint pains. You know, we know about hot flushes, but we often don't know that we get joint aches and right. pains. Um, and it's called the, you know, sort of arthralgia of menopause. And it, again, it's because oestrogen um, reduces in our body. Um, and so we get, you know, aches and pains. I mean, I remember getting it in my big toe and thinking I'm never going to be able to wear high heels again, you know? Not that I wear them a lot. But, um, you know, HRT has helped to improve oh, so it that. Just to go off on a, a sideline here, because there's a great question which I suffer from, which is rosacea. Oh. Um, and somebody here is asking you about rosacea, how to, um, what you can use on your face to curb rosacea. Is rosacea a hormone-driven skin complaint? So um, I think women who've got existing skin conditions like rosacea, eczema, psoriasis, can find that at this time that it flares up because you do get those sort of um, sebum deregulation, you get sort of changes in your skin, it may become drier, thinner. Now, probably more questions, more people ask this question than anything else, which is, 
weight gain. Yeah. So does it necessarily mean if you are losing oestrogen, you're going to start gaining weight? Not necessarily, but it is one of the sort of uh, major concerns and, you know, one of the things I see many women about. In, and it's not necessarily weight, it's waste yeah. gain. You yeah. know, it's around that yeah. middle. And it's because, one, the oestrogen helps with our management of sort of carbs and sugars with our insulin management. But also the drop in oestrogen means that our body's storing fat because it can make a bit of oestrogen from fat. Also, we're very stressed. You know, we live in this constant state of stress. So let's not forget cortisol. So when that stress hormone cortisol is high, it also holds on to fat. So there's lots of factors. And also we know that women don't move that much yeah. when they get into midlife. So yes, there's an element of aging. There's an element of hormones. Um, there's an element of maybe that we need to take a bit more action ourselves. Um, and things like a Mediterranean diet is you know, really good for women because it has nuts, <coughs> seeds, and sort of natural, what we call plant-based phytoestrogens in it. Um, and one of the things I think women are now coming to realize, is not just about doing cardio workouts, it's also doing sort of weights, you know, or strength training, because the more muscle you have, your metabolism is a bit faster. There's so little now, um, well, there's more and more now being spoken about the menopause, but there has been so little historically written about it. Discussed. Is it because it was considered the end of a woman's life? Was it like the full stop? So we're not going to look, we're not going to even research how you behave after it. Yeah, I, I do think that. I think that, you know, it was the fact that it signified almost end of life. Or, you know, a woman became shriveled, old, yeah. you know, her worth, you know, she didn't seem to have any worth after her reproductive life ended. But, you know, nowadays, you know, there's so many of us sort of rising to our careers. There's many more women visible out there who are talking about menopause. And yes, it's a natural process in life, but it can be challenging. And I think that's where the awareness needs to be raised. Yeah. Just finally then, for someone who's post-menopause, um, what are the three top tips to be sexy, to have any libido whatsoever, and to look the best you can possibly look? Three tips. Yeah, so, so keep moving. I would say vaginal oestrogen. You know, I would say, you know, vaginal oestrogen. And then, you know, what the third thing... I mean, I think it's very individual, you know, what women like. But I think looking after your skin, your hair, um, really helps to sort of lift women. It's not a vain thing. It's about mental health. So, you know, managing your mental health and, and feeling sexy inside, feeling that confidence, then sort of emanates outwards. Gosh, do you know what? So we're so lucky because my mum was a generation who would whisper the word menopause. Yeah. You know, the fact we can start discussing it and we're discovering more and more thanks to people like yourself. Thank you so much, Dr. No, Harper. thank you. Really enjoyed it. Welcome back. Now we're going to pop the Harper Clinic details in the show notes below. And speaking of health, what do we all do to keep healthy and for our own wellness? Susanna, you write a great deal about this. So what do you do to keep healthy? The basic things for me are I eat as much fresh food as possible. That's number one. Equal to number one is I move probably three times a week. I don't, I don't think people have to indulge in some massive hit class regime, I, you know, fat burning, all that sort of stuff. I think it is very important to just keep moving. It could be a walk. Uh, it could be going to a class, it could be Pilates, but I think we have to keep moving. And that's so important for everything, our joints and uh, our immune systems. So, yeah, just keep I moving. agree. I mean, I, I study yoga and um, BKS Iyengar, who I studied with, he said the chair is the death of us yeah. because we're shortening hamstrings and we just sit and we spread, mm. actually, mm. and we should just keep walking. Absolutely. Yeah. Ruby, look at you. <laughs> what do you do? Yeah. You're busy, so I'm, you run around. I'm very busy, but I've never been particularly, you know, I wasn't one for going to the gym or classes. You know, I can, I'm very flexible. So that helped in a yoga class when I go on holiday and then they go, oh, have you been doing this a long time? And I went, no, but I'm standing, you know, as a yeah, makeup yeah. artist, pretty yeah. much most of my days were standing, moving, carrying my kit, mm. helping the kit, helping lighting crew. All of that, I was always active, mm. the way Susanna's saying. The, since COVID came, it's the first time in my life I have sat on my ass, basically, and <laughs> looked at a computer the way I've never looked at something. Yeah. And it does. So my flexibility, I notice, has yeah. suffered mm. from that. So now, even if it's a phone call and I'm doing something, I try to walk around. Yeah. Now I do train twice a week. Yeah. So a bit of 
bit of weights. strength training, weights. a bit of weights. Yeah. I walk. I don't necessarily, I'm not necessarily really a gym person, but when I go, anything I do makes you feel better. Most you have amazing. to yeah. get it yeah. out. Somebody said to me once, no one comes back from a walk saying, I wish I hadn't done that. Yeah. If you, you just feel better. Uh, absolutely. But what you were saying was so interesting post-pandemic because... I think uh, I used to do, I, I say I used to do yoga and the guy that runs my yoga studio in the centre of London, he said the classes are all empty. People started doing them online and then they've just stopped. And there's something in our mindset, I think, that shifted slightly. It's I think big. that's such a shame though, because I actually get such joy out of being in a yoga class. I think it's all about there's nothing the environment like it. it's amazing. Yeah. being with other people. Energy yeah. from other people. Yeah. 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 I just think people are going back to work and so those priorities take so suddenly that is shifted again yeah. and they will come back because you have to eat well and you do have to move your body yeah. for your well-being and touch would get to an old age otherwise yeah. we're not going to get there and and you don't want to get there impeded no, totally you want no, to you're be totally right you want to get there and enjoy yeah. it you need to be independent so that you're not relying on anybody um it's not about looking perfect we've got to just live our life properly Aren't you we? talk about impeded. I I don't know if you could all see this. It's like I sit in front of a microphone for every single day and I'm getting this. I'm getting a real mm. shortening of my back. As, as soon as you said that, oh I my God. Go like like that. <laughs> you know, I went on a yoga retreat in the summer and there was a masseuse there and she said, you've got to really work on this because she said the damage has been done. You know, you were saying your body changes shape mm. through age mm. and I have to re I will never get it back. In fact, probably sitting here, you can see the curvature. Also, if you're flex if you've done quite a lot of yoga and if you're flexible, I'm also um, hypermobile, and oh my God, you so tend to extreme. just sit yeah. because your body can flex so easily. <gasps> so you, t I've written articles on this. So you tend to just you can hunch like that. Yeah, yeah. Quite stiff people would might not yeah, be able to hunch like do that. it. And then that we have to correct, we have to work to correct ourselves. Yes, wow. Yeah. Oh gosh. So yeah. um, yes, we're all sitting up nice and straight. <laughs> no, no. But, but you're absolutely right. If we want to live a long age, we want to live it and be active, don't yeah. we? Really. Well, whatever age we're blessed with, you want to be not reliant on somebody, yeah. and you want to do as much as you can because that gives you dignity, that keeps you well, and that gives you a quality of life. Now. Last week, I had the pleasure of sitting down with the wonderful Kelly Rutherford, the 53-year-old American actress who starred in series such as Gossip Girl and Melrose Place. And we discussed everything from fashion to the life that she loves here, living in the Cotswolds countryside. I am so excited. I am sitting on the sofa with the American actress and entrepreneur, the wonderful Kelly Rutherford. Now, I'm not going to read this cue card because I'm such an anorak, Kelly. I think I remember all your list of credits. You will probably remember Kelly most as Lily from Gossip Girl or maybe Sam from the soap opera Generations or even Megan from Melrose Place. But you are also co-founder of a social media app called Wiser, where you get to interview verified experts. Is that right? Yeah, it's, um, it's an app for knowledge and expertise. So, you know, anything you're knowledgeable about, you can talk about, create courses around. It can be anything from a, you know, a teacher to a celebrity to whoever, anyone that's ex an expert, wow. someone in AI. And then you can follow and share. Wow, I bet you've met some interesting people. Yeah, we're yes. just onboarding now. So so we're going to do 20 questions. Okay. You have not seen no, these. So no. it's quick fire. So literally, on. but I've just met you and I know you're as oh. honest as the day is long. Oh, no. So um, you will speak organically, okay. I know. Are okay. we ready? Yes. Okay, so fashion, first of all. When it comes to your wardrobe, what do you live in? Jeans and dresses. Jeans and dresses. T-shirts. T-shirts. I've seen you a lot in a lovely, simple white T-shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah. You wear a white T-shirt. I enough. love a good white T-shirt. Uh, what number one style do's and don'ts? What are you totally against and what do you think works really well? Oh, classics work really well. And I think th things that are too trendy, too of the moment, you, you just, what do you do with it later? I don't know. So yeah. that's, I think classic is yeah. always good. What do you wear to travel in? You know, I love either like, again, jeans and a t-shirt, a big cuddly coat or sweater that, you know, can like be like a blanket or a cashmere set. And trainers? Yeah, mostly trainers, yeah. Um, most treasured designer piece in your wardrobe? Mm. Well, I have some beautiful, beautiful things. 
that are really works of art. I see them as works of art. They're the, by this Korean designer named Sun Jun Wan. And I think she's just selling in Korea, but I've been going to her show in Fashion Week wow. for years. Wow. Um, and she's, she's just, I, I love artisans and artists and people that create things that, that um, are unique. I feel honored that she invites me and that, you know, that she, that we have a kind of, and we don't even, we know each other, but not even that well. We just, I just admire her work Lovely. and she's very Lovely. sweet I to love me, that. So. <laughs> so now I'm desperate to talk about uh, your beauty must-haves. What is the makeup product that you would die if they discontinued? Oh, nothing. I don't love makeup that much. I'm actually hoping they discontinue it all. I think we should all just go natural. It's so much work, isn't it? It's but you're so much hardly work. wearing any, are you? What are you wearing? You're I wearing wear. Base? Okay, so I have worn for years Chanel base, and it's B30, and it's the I don't even know what it's called. I just go in and ask for it. It's in like a it's a, like a square thing, and they used it on Gossip Girl, oh. the makeup artist, and I loved the color, and I just stayed with it. And it's kind of sheer, but a little coverage. I like a little coverage. Um, and then I use this over it, especially in the summer, um, or if I'm going on camera or something, this Avene, A-V-E-N-E, you know, I'm sure you guys can mm -hmm, get it, the, mm -hmm. and it's 50 coverage, and it's in sable is the color, but it's like pancake makeup, so yeah, it's not yeah. for everyone. I use it with like a brush and just kind of brush it on a bit. Um, and you wear a little eyeliner and mascara, is that yeah, it? Yeah, that's about it. So if any of those brands that you mentioned, the Chanel, the Avene, if they stopped, would it be a bad day for you or would you No, speak? no, I would kind of be like, let's all just relax a bit about it all. <laughs> no You're getting a lot no of love over there. on the back of my neck. See what I mean? They'll First upstage you every there. day of the week, dogs. I love no, this. I no one's done this for ages. Isn't it? It's, he's it's he's so very lovely. romantic. So he's, lovely. he's very romantic. He's this whispering in my ear throughout <laughs> this. Twombly. Kelly, oh. do you have treatments? Do you have beauty treatments? Mm. I like um, Joanna Check. Her facials are wonderful. And I like Biologique Recherche. You know, that one's a French one. I, I'm probably completely pronouncing it wrong. And I love massages. I mean, for me, it's more like spa, like a yeah, good yeah. massage or, or that kind of thing. But I mean, I don't know if a treatment's Botox. I mean, I do that here and there. You were talking about using makeup from Gossip Girl. What is the best tip any of the makeup artists have given you as an actress? Mm, interesting. The coverage, I think really nice coverage where it doesn't look like you're wearing a lot of makeup is, is so beautiful, you know? And just learning how to do that is, a, is, a, is an art form. I would you ever be the sort of actress that would go and apply a bit more because you didn't like what they did? I may take some off. I haven't been known to apply more. Have you? But I've, I've gone in and, you know, maybe kind of calmed it down a little bit sometimes. But then I've also learned that Sometimes, you know, when you see it, then when it looks like on camera, something completely different, what may appear like a lot to me, right? Yeah. Then you get on camera with the lights, and you go, no, it's perfect. Yeah. And so you really learn to trust over time. You know, you're like, yeah. you find you're like, okay, they know what they're doing, and you you, you trust, trust them. them in the you end. Build they know trust. your face so Especially well. Especially when you're doing a series or something like that. You know, you just you sit there, and half the time you take a nap. You're like, oh. Um, Kelly, you've got your two dogs here, so I guess your exercise is walking the dogs. Anything else? Yeah. I stretch. I swim if I'm on vacation, if there's a pool. I love to swim. I was on swim team in school. I love to swim, go to the beach and Cold swim. water swimming? Yeah, that's great. It's a big thing now, isn't it? Yeah, Keep there's something it. to it because it's anti-inflammatory. Yeah. And then, you know, as you get older with your joints and everything, I mean, swimming is just like heaven. Yeah, it feels I so agree. good. It's like a meditation. Mm -hmm. Do you meditate? I have. I, I go in and out of it. But, you know, I don't really listen to music. I don't really watch TV. And I, I'm really... My environment is so peaceful that it's almost like I'm meditating all day. You know, I create an environment that already is feels like a meditation. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So that. But I'm, I think you do here, to be honest. Yeah. I think you do here. I think you're very calm. Yeah. I love actresses that just don't watch television. I, that's crazy. It's weird. I it's know. so crazy. Isn't but it? I never have, even when I was a kid. I mean, you know, I gave it away. I was like, my brother's like, why do you even have a TV? I'm like, I know. It's, it's so ironic. Weird. Let's talk about um, your career. 
What of, I, I listed three of the main characters we know you from, but what is your favorite character that you've mm. ever played? I mean, I, I think Lily Vander Woodson really was like, it was a, such a great opportunity in terms of a character. I mean, how much did you bring to that or how much is in the writing? Did, were they quite it's flexible? Both. I think you bring stuff and then they start writing for you and then you, it becomes, it's real alchemy, you know what I mean, over time, I think, you know, but. But the other ones, I think I loved Homefront. That was a series that I don't know how many people have seen. And Briscoe County Junior um, were three that I just absolutely had so much fun doing. And all, I mean, everything I've done, I've really loved, to be honest. I have, I've had, thank God, good experiences. Can I ask, how do you feel at the age of, can I say how old you yeah, are? Yeah, of course. 53? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you feel at 53? <sighs> Good. I mean, not much is aching. I, you know, I go to bed at night and I'm just, I think, God, I feel good because my body feels good. I'm just thankful that my body has kept up with my life. And I, I personally, I'm 67. We could do I'm, a whole episode we could on do that. <laughs> we, need a, we need more time. But I feel great because all yes. that's gone, all those, and I'm enjoying this chapter. Yes. Are you enjoying this chapter? Very much. I'm very much enjoying this chapter. Yeah. yeah, if, yeah. Um, if you look ahead, what is it you would like to do? What is there that you would like to achieve? I believe it's, it's more natural, more being more in nature, just family, like, you know, watching my kids grow up and walking with the dogs and, again, just being in nature, you know, sitting by a fireplace and reading a book. It's like almost like calming down a little bit. I mean, I, you know, that's, that's what I look forward to, very kind of simple, beautiful, under the radar kind of. Um, enjoying life. <laughs> you, you, you are so very open. I mean, from the moment you arrived, you're so open and no. honest. But is there one thing that none of us know about you? Mm. One thing that oh, I'm sure all of us no know. one's written about you. Give us an no. exclusive. I don't know. I really don't. I, I feel like, I mean, I'm sure there's a million things, but I, nothing that I would find that exciting, or that I would think you would find exciting. What, what I don't is, know. Okay, so <laughs> you, you said you never watch television. Yeah, yeah. Do you not binge on Netflix? Is there something that you watched that you just think, well, that's part of my day, and, and if I don't watch it, read it, see it, I'm missing out? No, I think I, think I crave peace and quiet. I crave like to hear my own thoughts. Do you think that's because you come from a showbiz background? I hate the word, but you come yeah. from a frantic acting mm. background. Do you think you found your calm and, and tranquility mm. as a juxtaposition to the madness of the acting job? That's such a good question because as you were saying it, I, I was thinking to myself, no, that's why I do what I do because there is such a calm in acting. To me, it's it really. I couldn't see myself in an office, or like I it. In, I couldn't see myself doing anything other than acting. Really, for it be, and it wasn't something I intended to do. It just was like process of elimination. I thought I could always learn, always grow. I could go do it and then leave, and and have time for myself. And and it was a way of expressing all that I felt, and and in you know, in a way that was safe. Yeah. And it's safe to do it through a character. So basically, that was where you were meant to be. Yeah, and I find peace in it. Yeah. Maybe not in the beginning, because you're so nervous, you know, like we all are in the beginning of any profession. You're, am I doing this right? And, you know, all of that. But as time went on, I, found, I find such peace on a set. Well, you've calmed oh, me really down, not. because I'm <laughs> as manic as you are calm. And, I, and also with your dogs. And can I just ask one question? Would you have another dog? Oh, I'd have a hundred. I can't wait to have so many animals. And they're all, I mean, they're all going to be sleeping in the bed too, which is yes. going to be a whole issue. I'm glad I have my kids now. <laughs> it's good that I got the kids. I have the kids now. That's right. Oh, they've had the final yeah. say. <laughs> Kelly Rutherford, thank you oh, so much. I love that. I could sit here for another thank 20 you. minutes. Easy. Oh my God, I think I'm having a hot flash. See, <laughs> we need an episode on menopause. I really love that. She is the most zen of women. One of the most zen I've ever interviewed. Anyway, that's it. I wish it wasn't over. Thank you so much, Susanna, Ruby, of course, Rebecca, and the wonderful Dr. Harper and Kelly. I've enjoyed it so much, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Next week, we're back to the usual Sherlock show with food, fashion, drink, and do leave a comment below, and do subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and all the rest. Have a wonderful day, wherever you are. Goodbye.